difficult to watch. I know. This bottle ship belonged to my parents, and unfortunately, it ceased to exist. That was quite heartbreaking because uh, this ship has fascinated me ever since my dad got it as a gift from his students and has been the source of inspiration ever since I started making these myself. The ship was manufactured by a northern German company called Budelbini, located in the city of Hamburg. Now on the plus side, only the bottle broke and everything else survived the incident. So, what to do with the precious remains? So I contacted the company and they said, there's no way you're gonna get that ship off of that putty. And yes, that stuff really is rock solid. So I decided to remove as much of the broken glass as possible to leave the remains as genuine and as original as possible. So I got myself a diamond cutter for my Dremel and it worked out quite nice. Even smoothed out the edges. Of course it's impossible to put this ship back into a bottle in the usual way. I mean, you cannot disassemble a bottle ship once the strings have been cut. Hence, I built myself a lath for a one liter whiskey bottle, enabling me to make a precision cut to get the ship back in, basically via a cesarean. Turned out rather nice. This uh, one liter bottle of the Master Distillers Reserve by Glenlivet holds enough storeroom capacity to give the Rikma Rikmas a new home, especially with the extra layer of glass under the putty. So once that became clear, it was time to give Mr. Whiskey Bottle a bath to remove any advertisement, any labels. That actually took two days in order for these uh, to dissolve. And yep, nice and clear, looking good. So far so good. The ship fits, the lid is on, the only thing missing is the cork. It wasn't too hard disassembling it. The seal came off pretty easy and the rope securing the cork came off, well, had to be cut. But of course that's not, not a big problem. The only problem is you'll never find two bottles with the exact same width in the neck. So, of course, I had to find another cork, and even that had to be cut to size, not only in length, but also in width. Most of the width cutting is not shown here, it's not that interesting, but you can pretty much imagine that this had to be a snug fit. And also the printing wasn't so much my case. So, getting a few more of the uh, seal wax in there. Reattaching to the new, new cork was not that difficult. So at this point, I was basically done. I could have just, you know, sealed up the bottom, here the top with the cork and the seal, and that would be it. The ship would be restored. <laughs> Since the uh, bottle has already been opened, why not do something really, really cool and really challenging? A rotating beacon in a lighthouse. It was fun. It was fun. So, let's take a look at it. I started out by taking a 10 millimeter round piece of wood and cutting a 4 millimeter hole in the center. That wasn't too hard. So, I started shaping the lighthouse. Started from top to bottom. Here the lens foundation with the first platform and then the slightly sloped base and the shaft of the, of the lighthouse. Beautiful thing about the gear chuck of the drill is it leaves these markings in the shaft which are ideal for windows. So, as you can tell, I finally made quits with the uh, Hoochie nail polish and I got myself an airbrush system. I can highly recommend that because you get much cleaner results and efficient use of paint. 
and the results are just gorgeous. If you know what you're doing and you don't mind cleaning a, li a little bit, it leaves really, really nice results as you can see. Yeah, once it was finished, I cut the uh, lighters off of the remaining shaft of the wood. And then I got myself a metal washer, painted it black with 4.2 inner diameter. And I used a four millimeter rod to put it right in the center. And it makes an excellent platform surrounding the lens of the lighthouse. And with the super gluing place, this thing ain't going anywhere anymore. This is a five volt gear motor, five volts so I can run it on USB. And these gears were just from a cheap uh, Chinese set that I got once a while ago. I never knew how to use it, but now I finally do. And for the lens of the lighthouse, once again, I chose these guitar bullets. Those are those little balls at the end of a electric guitar string, which hold them in place. I kept these for years and I finally got them to use or found a use for purpose for them. So I had to drill a hole into them. First just one millimeter to make sure it's square and center. And then I widen it out a little bit right there to about two millimeters in order to make room for two micro LEDs. Now this is extremely superimposed. I mean, this looks huge, but it's really tiny. I mean, you can see the ripples on my fingers, right? But obviously, you cannot have the LED with the cable rotating along with the beacon. So what do you do? You need to have a rotating rod or a rotating shaft with the beacon itself and a fixed inner tube in order to hold the cable in place. So that's what I did. I got two two millimeter rods, which are these two here and connected them with shrink tubing. Now with the shrink tubes, the outer diameter of this cable bearing tube fits nicely into the outer rotating three millimeter brass tube, which again is also surrounded by a shrink tube. And uh, with the shrink tube increasing the outer diameter of the three millimeter tube as well, it fits nicely into the four millimeter hole of the lighthouse itself. I mean, without the shrink tubes, the uh, three millimeter and the two millimeter tubes would be way too loose in the shafts and they would just wobble around. And this way they stay connected and they maintain a smooth surface. I mean, before this, I actually tried soldering them together and of course that was a complete mess. So here the uh, tubes are finished. This is the three millimeter one, the thinner two millimeter one and Voila, ah, oh, smooth as can be. Very, very smooth. A tiny little bit of friction, of course, but that's okay. The gear engine has enough leverage to deal with that. So, yeah. Once again, here in the four millimeter hole, no friction whatsoever. So far, so good. So that should work. Now each one of these LEDs shines out for about 170 degrees, so putting two of them together to get a full 360 degree uh, illumination makes sense. But how do you get them attached? Well, I used some uh, clear nail polish once again, because nail polish has uh, good isolating um, characteristics for these cable ends in order to keep them from shorting each other out. Uh, each one got a coat and then I coated them together and that way they stay in shape and they don't mess with each other. So then of course all four cables also get a cable sheathing just to make sure that especially in the testing phase the uh, cables don't get twisted around too much by themselves. Of course shrink tubing is an issue and fortunately I could use the lens as sort of a heat shield <laughs> to you know protect the uh, lights themselves. And then putting that to the test. Yeah, let's speed that up just a little bit. 
there they fit in there quite nicely and here you can pretty much see how the two millimeter tube will be able to twist and turn inside the lens of course the uh, rotating one has to be shorter than the fixed one because i need to fix the inner rod at, at some point to keep the cables from turning and so the outer one has to be shorter to be able to rotate around it around the inner shaft so here on the inside is the two millimeter one and here in contact with the lens is the three millimeter shaft and how to attach them here i cut out a small piece of hot glue and then just got the torch and as soon as it melts let it go and it just melts into place then i got a piece of string back attached to it and then i gave it a hot glue scarf like so I mean, these lines are usually a pain in the butt, especially to clean them off, and sometimes they mess up your projects, but here I put them to good use. To have this thin layer, this extremely thin but effective layer of uh, hot glue around it on each side, a few adjustments, and I never had to deal with it again. First attempt was a big success. Now, what to use as a lens? First, I used a straw, but the straw was a little bit too tiny, so I looked around my office and I found this old syringe with a safety cap. And this safety cap looked quite nice. And so I cut it up and it fit in just fine. It's a tiny little bit wider than the base of the lens, but that's okay. I mean, it's going to be fine. And here there's no friction whatsoever. For a roof of the lens, I used these fake diamonds. <laughs> I think this one is six millimeters wide. I painted it black and then to make sure it's really, really straight and it doesn't look crooked or anything, I mounted it and then got some simple all-purpose all glue and just attach it and finished. Then it was time to find a good location, close but not too close to the ship and also within reaching distance of the mount of the ball, which you see here in the back. And of course, the lighthouse by itself looks kind of dull, so I carved up again a mountain or a shore or a riff, better yet. And yeah, that seemed quite nice from the rough shape. Got the uh, markings for the, uh, for the shaft in place and then just made it thinner and thinner. I couldn't go too thick because um, the uh, brass tubes from the shafts of the lighthouse, of course, have to reach the uh, <laughs> the gears inside. So I had to make that base part of the uh, riff pretty clean, uh, pretty small, and then just cut up the rest of the rocks. It's actually kind of a pleasant experience making these rocks. I mean, you can just be creative, and there are no mistakes. They're just happy little incidents. <laughs> Uh, just keep cutting that up and then cover it with a black base and then use the old simple trick by taking a dry brush with some gray color and just brush over the edges and it looks like solid rock. Boom. Perfect. So at this point it was decided where the lighthouse would go and so I had to mark it up on the uh, lower side where the glass still remains on where to drill the hole for the shaft of the lighthouse right there. Didn't have to be too accurate. I mean, I used a five millimeter drill in order to get there just to have a little bit of, you know, empty space just in case I have to adjust it just a little bit. Always get a brand new and sharp cutter for these glass projects. I ended up removing some of the old water because it just kept get being too thick and then I removed the water from the glass got the glass back attached and then attached the, ro the rock again to the glass which you can see here then I put the uh, three millimeter bearing inside and then I covered it up with the lens and at this point there was no return because once the lens is inside you can't pull it through so this is fixed now and so this is the fixed diorama right here so now where I know exactly where the lighthouse is going to go, I started drilling holes into the old base here with the uh, four millimeters. And then of course I had to measure out the gear with 11 millimeters. So I gave it 13 millimeters of width 
once again just to give it a little bit of space and to make sure I don't ever touch the edges of this frame. Interestingly the uh, engine also has about 11 millimeters in width so I just kept going with the 13 millimeter holes and once that was finished I just took a mill and just widened out the, the holes and also connected them with each other. That was actually pretty easy. Went way smoother than I thought. And right there, the engine fits in there ever so nicely. Not too deep, obviously. And then on the other side, I had to get a 2.5 centimeter uh, drill in order to make room for the USB plug. And then, of course, I just had to connect these two with another hole, connecting the two. And then started soldering. I cushioned up the sides of the engine with this insulating uh, material, which is about one millimeter thick, in order to reduce the uh, vibrations and also some of the sound emitted from this engine. I mean, it's not too bad, but it is kind of a nuisance over time, so cushioning it up is recommendable. Got the screws in place, covered it up with a wooden disc, and so far so good. Now it was time to drill in the holes into the glass. Make sure that you cool the glass. I mean, I had some issues with some minor cracking while I did that, so make sure you always use water. And, well, the diorama stands. Again, some hot glue to fix the lighthouse in place. Right here, just where it's supposed to go. And now the entire diorama was ready to go into the final assembly of the bottle. Now this glass glue is actually UV orientated, if you want to call it that. So at this point it's not really sticking, which is good because you can move it around if you have to. That worked out nicely. And then you have to get a simple UV lamp and about five seconds exposure to this UV light makes the glue stick and it works. You'll see that in just a second. So attach the base of the bottle again. You can s still see the old glue. Make sure that's nice and center. Then I got some super glue for the gear and put that into the uh, three millimeter brass tube. That's stuck like heck. I mean, that super glue really is super glue. I mean, that thing ain't ever coming off again. <laughs> and of course here I was eager to put it to the test and voila, it did exactly what it was supposed to do. Turning ever so smoothly. Now it was time to put in the light shaft, the fixed two millimeter tube inside. Now you can see it's sticking out just a little further. It won't go all the way in. Just enough in order to, for the light to show up in the lens. It shouldn't touch the lens really on the top. And then I cover the remaining cables up, and put it to the engine. Of course the engine is isolated, all those gears, they would mess up the cables. So there are there's some protection between that obviously. So get everything, all the cables in place. Make sure nothing impedes each other. And that was it. From the first beginning, it, it did exactly what it was supposed to. Let's speed that up. Ah, isn't that nice? This was the final testing of the light. And so I put in this little piece of wood as a truss, fixed it to the rest of the stand, which was of course also wooden, so that made it pretty easy. And once that was dry and secure, I got some basic glue once again to the cable tube to make sure it's not rotating and the, um, the cables never get twisted, or at least not too much. And here you can see the tube is fixed. The three millimeter tube is obviously twisting or is turning just as those gears are. And this is the final assembly. 
So, now that everything's nice and running, it was time to seal it up. Again, the glass glue comes into action and attach that. That fit in just the way I cut it. Then use the weight of the glass to make sure that's good, it has good contact with the base and also use it to distribute the glue properly around it. And then I got these two little lifesavers to get the proper UV light exposure. And then solid as a rock. That thing also ain't never gonna go anywhere. A beautiful part about this glue is, as you can see here, I mean, there is sort of a crack between the two parts of the base and the bottle itself, but using this glue, it blends in with the glass like liquid glass. I mean, by covering up these cracks, you can hardly tell that there was a crack in the first place. And with the UV light, it gets so hard. Beautiful. Now putting the cork in as the final step. As you can tell, I did some maintenance and some minor sanding on the cork itself. It looks quite nice now. Got it in there quite carefully because I didn't want to crack the seal. Just enough so uh, those ropes get around around the neck of the of the bottle. Then I just got some hot glue to attach those ends and to attach the seal. And project finished. And also video finished. And thank you for watching. Bye bye.